Hello everybody, I'm Justin Ross with Fluke by Medical, and today I'm going to go over some of the accessories for our ESA line, specifically the 612, 14, and 15. Today I have an ESA 614 here, so this is a product you only see in the U.S. market. Um, if you're outside the United States, you'll probably be familiar with our 612 or 615. So what some people don't realize is just how many accessories we have for this device and how much easier it can make your life having some of these accessories. So let's start going over some of them. I'm going to go ahead and lay this down so we can see past it. The first one I want to cover is the power cord. So if you've purchased any of our older devices, you'll notice that the power cord on this one is slightly different. The first thing is it only has a 15 amp plug, where before we had a 20 amp plug and you had to have an adapter on the end of it. The cord used to be a little bit shorter. So now the cable is about two feet longer. It's much more flexible and it comes with a 15 amp plug so you don't need that adapter. If you want this or you don't have the part number for it, please reach out to your local Fluke rep or jump on our website and we'll be happy to help you out with getting all these part numbers. But there's the first accessory. Okay, moving on. Standard accessories that we see in the package is these two cables here, the black cable and the red cable. All right, so, and you just keep rolling off the desk. So we'll put you there. All right, now this is our ground cable. Um, before we used to use a Calvin cable, which is a dual cable. This is a single wire stranded cable. So what's nice about that, if you break the cable, lose the cable, forget the cable, eat the cable, whatever the reason is, grab any of our other flute cables, simply plug it in, then you can put on an alligator clip and take it to the ground and you do it zero out the cable and you're back up and running. It makes it super easy, so if you ever have an issue in the field, any flute cable will plug in, or one off your multimeter maybe, plug in, zero it out, and back up and running. Now that we talked about this alligator clip, I wanna go a little bit more in depth with it. And it doesn't sound like a big deal until you start digging into it. And the first thing you notice is it's chiseled. So it gets narrower at the tip here, as well as this way. And then when you open it up, there is an extra tooth right here at the very tip, as well as some serrated teeth here along the jawline which allows you to reach into those recessed ground pins and really hold on. So when you're connected to your safety analyzer, you're not trying to hold that cable on there and then you're at the safety analyzer is and record your results. It's going to hold it in place for you. Ow, is that thing sharp? All right, now here's something that I did as a biomed for years and uh, if you'd like to raise your hand or not, you have to admit we've probably done it. At some point in time, you couldn't get to the ground part. You had to try to reach in through something. So you probably stuck like an Allen wrench in here or a screwdriver in your, in your alligator clip to reach in then. That's another point of uh, contact. It can change your resistances and it's just not a good idea. It's not safe. So instead we can take off this alligator clip and plug in the probe. That simple. And now you can reach into those recessed ground pins. That nice and easy. If you lose it, it comes with two, it comes with a black one, you can use that one. There you go. Nice, easy trade out. Now let's start talking about applied parts. So applied parts, you have five applied parts ports across the top of the safety analyzer. And the safety analyzer comes with one of these five snap to banana pin adapters, which would plug into here. So this is great, so you can put five banana pins in, or use this, and you can use five snap pins. Now in a prior video, you may have seen us talk about how to connect an entire defib at one time. You like a three lead, five lead, or 12 lead defibrillator. The problem with that is, is we have to use another accessory. Now this accessory is not part, technically part of the ESA accessory kit. Actually, you're gonna find it's under the Impulse 7000 accessories. This is the hands-free adapter. This one just has to be for Zoll, but we also have them for Medtronic, Philips, and all the other defibrillators. So when you're done through discharge test, you would disconnect this from the Impulse 7000, boop, and you can then apply it over here to your ESA 614 or 615. So while it's technically not an ESA adapter, I'm going to consider it one. Now, if you do this, obviously you're not gonna be able to put this snap pin adapter in because it's filled up with those other two ports there, right? So how are you gonna connect your leads? Here's how. We have these universal snap to banana pin adapters. So here it has a banana pin on this end. You can put a banana pin through here and a snap onto here. And they simply plug into these ports. Look how easy that is. And then I could take my three lead ECG off my defibrillator or my patient monitor or whatever have you and click, click, click right there. Easy enough to do. These come in a bag of 10. 
Um, this is not a part number to find, so it's 2462072. That's universal snap to banana pin adapter. Okay, so here's three leads and a hands-free. Obviously, you're gonna have a problem if you have a 10 lead defibrillator. You only have three leads. So we can take these out and we can use this other adapter. This is called our one to 10 adapter, which allows you to connect 10 banana pins and it comes with the second one of the snap to banana pin adapters. So you can use that one and the one that comes with the ESA. There you go. And then you have 10 snaps to one output. It also comes with a small black cable. You can plug it in here and into your applied parts. So now you can put up to 10 leads as well as your hands-free adapter into this top of the safety analyzer. That nice, easy to do. Maybe 10 leads isn't enough. Maybe you need 20 leads, simple enough. Another one to 10 adapter, plug it in, off you go. Technically you can expand it up to 50 leads. Pretty cool, easy thing to do. All right, now I'm gonna move that off to the side here. And let's talk about ultrasounds for a second. So we have our ULT-800. Um, a lot of people are testing our T-probes, or testing our T-probes with the ULT-800. The problem with the ULT-800 is it is a pass-fail device. And if you need to know the exact reading on that, on that T-probe or your ultrasound probe, how are you going to do it? So there's this adapter right here. This is a 3472633 uh, ESA615 uh, ultrasound adapter. Okay, And what it'll allow you to do is connect the plates, the adapter plates from the ULT-800 or the dual conductivity probe to this, and then this will go into your safety analyzer, just like that. I recommend you get two of them, because you're gonna need one for the uh, cut for the adapter plate, and you're gonna need one for the T-probe. So one up there, down there, one up here. Makes it nice, easy. Now you can connect this through, use the applied parts test, the sink current, and you can get the exact leakage off that T-probe or ultrasound probe. There you go. Another adapter that you might want to use with that is this ground probe. Here it is, and you can put this into the fluid. Um, there's some other things you can do with it, but it's got that old style connector on it that's familiar with our uh, ESAs, so you can connect it right to that last adapter, and then this would go into your fluids. I actually, you connect it up here. There you go. And then into the fluid bath to test your ultrasound probes or your T probes. Another great adapter. Um, this one is 2392427. So you're starting to see there's lots of capabilities with the safety analyzer. A lot of things that we forgot about or didn't know about and didn't know how to connect. So we've been kind of just maybe not doing without or finding another way. One more thing I like to talk about, point to point testing. So I'm going to grab the two cables that come with the safety analyzer. There's my red one. Here's my black one. And if I was going to do point-to-point -point testing, this is something that's required in most states and in, in the United States on your MRI tables, your CT tables, um, x-ray tables, lab analyzers, things like that. If you're going to do a new one or do a repair of one, there's permanently fixed devices. You're going to need to do point-to-point -point testing to get the ground wire resistance and check for transient voltages and leakages. So you connect these two in here and then you go and do your testing. The problem is you'll notice you only have about a six foot reach with these two cables. That's not quite far enough. You might need to go further. So we also sell 50 and 75 foot leads. So what we would do is simply maybe take out this black lead here. And of course it's gonna tie itself around. Murphy's Law here, one second. Take that off. Remove this cable from the batch. And then we can simply plug this into here. There we go. And then into here. So 75 foot cable here. I think we'll reach now. But we changed cables. We just changed cables. So anytime you change cable or introduce a new cable to the ESA, we want to put the two together. We go into the point to point function, go to the ground wire function, and we're going to zero the cables out, right? Because there's a lot of length here. So we want to make sure that resistance is zero then take our measurements. So we can do our, our uh, ground wire resistance and our leakages. So there you go. There is a bunch of accessories for this and that there are more, but these are some of the ones I like the most that make my job easy as a biomed. So I thank you for joining me today as we go over the accessories for the ESA 612, 14, and 15. And I look forward to seeing you in our next video.